Now we're going to talk about another use of shells. In addition to them being able to represent faceted objects as their primary purpose, as I mentioned earlier, shells can be used to represent point clouds. And um, a point cloud to hoops visualize is really just a shell that just has a point array. So again, when we draw a shell or a mesh, we can draw faces and edges, but we can also draw vertex markers at the vertices. Those markers can be different, um, of different types of symbols, different colors. They can be scalable or fixed as we zoom in or out. So there's a lot of control over those. So to support a point cloud, we can use what we call a degenerate shell, a shell that contains only points. And to facilitate the visual um, display of a point cloud type of shell, we support a concept called splat rendering. And that allows these vertices to be drawn as filled squares or circle markers. And these particular types of vertex markers will be 3D graphics hardware accelerated because we draw them inside of a pixel shader down in the, our, our interfaces to OpenGL or Direct3D. And they can be scalable or view dependent by setting a world space marker size. Oops. Um, uh, here we can see at marker attribute control, we can set size and we set world space. Uh, that means they will be scalable just like any other geometry in the scene as we zoom in and out. And so that will improve the visual result of any point cloud geometry as we zoom in. And we can see on the right here, after we've zoomed into this type of uh, scanned piece of a factory, if these markers had not been set in world space size, you could imagine that they would all start to spread out and separate from each other because they wouldn't have been drawn larger and larger to fill the gaps in between. So what you would have seen here is just a spattering, a, 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 a display of very sparse dots, squares or circles. They would look like dots at this point. So the previous example of shells as point clouds refers to shells that are just like any other piece of geometry. When you insert a shell or a cylinder or a polygon or a piece of text, the geometry re resides persistently in the hoop scene graph and that's residing in system memory at all times. So what we refer to that as is being in core. All the hoops geometry by default is in core memory. It's taking up memory. So we have a different support for rendering and displaying point clouds, what we call out of core or OOC. That refers to managing and interacting with data that can't fit inside system memory. It's a way to handle it where it's residing or some of the data is residing outside of core memory. <clears throat> so again, the same case here for these out of core point cloud support in Hoops Visualize. A point cloud still represented by a shell that contains only points, but they're gonna be provided via some different types of technology that we, we offer. Um, this OOC point cloud support involves several steps. F first, some types of standard industry point cloud formats could be passed to our out of core or OOC preprocessor called OOC.exe. And so this is the, the flow of how this OOC preprocessor would work. We can refer to the uh, section 11 of the um, OOC programming guide. There's a preprocessing step, and those import files come in. The OOC preprocessor will build up some customized spatial indexing of those files on disk. And then later on, your application can load up that preprocessed OOC file. And depending on the memory limit that you can set for that interaction, and how you're zooming in and out or panning into the scene, Hoops Visualize will only load in the points capped at the memory limit that you have set. So as you zoom in closer, it will throw away points and flush them from system memory that are outside of the view uh, and give priority to loading in points that are within the current view for us and within the current view of the camera. 
So we also, along with this, uh, support some APIs for filtering of selections and also persistently deleting points. Um, if we jump down to the um, section 11.5, and um, we have a bunch of sample code here to let you say, okay, if I want to select on a set of points that are on the have been rendered, but from an OOC file, uh, the filtering API lets you select on points kind of in a virtual way where they might not have been loaded in. They're still on disk, but had they all been loaded in, they would have been within the selection region. And this is important because you may want to select by polygonal area or rectangular area on a set of points and maybe select them all and delete all those points in that region. But again, only some sub percentage, small percentage of the points might have been loaded into system memory. And this is very common if you want to select on outlier points and delete them from the OOC file and have those deletions be persistent to kind of clean up your scanned OOC uh, point cloud data. To help show the different APIs that are used to interact, to load and interact with OOC data, there is an OOC sandbox included uh, with the uh, package down in the bin directory and it's an MFC sandbox so you could go ahead and explore that. 